Well, hello. Welcome to CoffeeCraft Season Zero. Live again on the server. And once again, the sun is setting just as I decide to start. So, let's get some stuff back on. There we go. And let's take a look at what's going on. Uh, if you remember, last week's episode was a little on the listless side. Uh, a little bit of wandering back and forth on my part while Rayest worked on her giant temple of death and doom or something like that. Or, sorry, her demonic fortress, demon fortress of doom or something. Uh, either way, it is getting taller. And I really need to start building up my castle. I, I can't... I can't not be the tallest building in the area. So uh, that, that'll, that'll have to be worked on. But uh, not today. Today, the plan is to go into the end um, and get some shulker shells because we are all running a little low. Okay, we're all running a lot low. And we desperately, desperately need shulker shells. So... Let's get a few things together, and uh, and then go from there. So first things first, let me grab a couple of empty shulker boxes. So I've got those for loot. Uh, hopefully I'll get some more as we go. I'm going to keep those in there. Let me grab... Where'd my armor box go? Combat armor. There we go. I want Yes, I'd rather have my infinity bow Let me grab a shield and a bumpkin Put my helmet back in there, so that way it's available. I've got arrows. That's good for that one. Keeping my backpack in there for safekeeping. That's my random project box for another day, matter of fact. Take that and that. Is those are all for random projects that are coming up. Alright, and where's my oh yeah, okay. Uh that one full? Oh yeah. That one's got plenty of rockets. I also got some more in the backpack. I got some more in the ender chest, so I should be good there. And I need where's the ender pearls? Yeah, let me grab a stack of those guys. Uh, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh yeah, I want to unload some of this so that way... If I die... My really important stuff doesn't get lost. I'm going to keep the bow. I'm going to keep the sword, the axe, and the pick. I'll put the shovel in there for now. That's not really getting rid of a lot of extra, is it? Um, huh. And... Yeah. I'll pick a... Oh. Let me grab an extra ender chest. Uh, I don't have an extra ender... Well, I got a extra ender chest. Let me go make another one real quick. Because preparation... And there we go. Bam. Okay. And all right. We will have to keep an eye on that. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. At least I got another one in the ender chest. Alright. To the end we go. 
because we are off to go hunting. Arcadius will be joining us a little bit later. And that's not the way I want to go. I really try to keep the doors up to keep those guys out. I really wish there was something we could put down on the end of portal to keep that from being a spawnable surface. But, is that the same guy I just kicked out of my house? Huh. Fast little beggar. Alright. So that is. As I mentioned last week, we are on a new server, so hopefully this trip to the end will be a lot better than the last one. Uh, we should see chunk rendering be okay and be able to move on from there. It looks like Mojang's working on a hotfix for 1.14, so when 1.14.1 rolls out, assuming there are no major problems, we will go ahead and roll with that. Um, I've been looking at a couple of different videos for upgrading some of the stuff that I know will break. And, uh, yeah, I don't know why I keep looking in there. All right, <clears throat> and that way we will, uh, wow, yeah, definitely faster. All right, Arcadius and I took that one the last time, and it was largely empty. since he's probably going to join us later. Let me take the next closest one. And let's see where we go from there. Bam. Wow. Oh yeah, this is better already. Okay, all right. Let's see. We <laughs> there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Although it is only the one lone tower. I'm kind of worried that I don't see any uh, end rods up here. That's usually a sign that I've been through. That hole in the wall probably also is a sign that I've been through. Yeah. I wonder if that's one that we pillaged before. Oh, it probably is. Alright. Oh. Never mind. We know the chunks that way are not working. Or not worth looking. So let's get this way. Let's see what we can see. I do have some ideas for farms that I would like to build on the server next. I got some build projects I'd like to do on the server as we go. Uh, the last few days where I've had time off and the energy to work, I've been working on getting the YouTube channel updated because, as you guys may remember from past streams, we've been having some uh, fun issues getting content to cross over from... Uh, YouTube. Because the, uh... Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, no. Hey, I hear you. I hear you. Um... For serious. There we go. take that thank you very much I'll take both of those all right I hear you on the inside I'll come after you in just a minute oh. I hate it when they disappear like that I 
do want almost all of it. The only thing, beard seeds. Beards are starting to look like the most useless item I have ever seen that has such promise. Okay, now they do. Gamma. Four. Oh. Oh. They're up here somewhere. There we go. I'll dig that. Thank you very much. Grab the lights. Again, that is in part how I know which ones I have actually gone through. And let's try to actually get the head this time. No! Alright. Nice part about a working server. I don't feel nearly as bad about doing that as I have in the past. Alright, I do want to grab this guy. And a few more of the end rods, because Reyes has been using them for lighting and decoration. And I'd much rather donate the stuff that I've pillaged and leave myself a signal that I have already gone through here. All right. Start with you down here, good sir. See the tracer fire? Come on. Where you at, buddy? Ooh. Not the landing I was expecting. But that was my own fault. That was my own fault. Okay. Alright. Somewhere out here is another one of them yahoos. Where you at, buddy? There you are. But I get for getting greedy. Ooh. All right. Not a bad start. You know, it is a bad start, though. Starting a conversation and forgetting what you were talking about before you got too far into it. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. I've been working on getting uh, the YouTube channel updated. As you may remember from earlier streams, we were having some really weird problems with um, YouTube suddenly not taking the live stream. It would keep telling me that... Uh, there was a problem with my channel. It was on hold and then I should check my profile. And I go log into the dashboard and dashboard go, nah, bro, everything's good. And uh, just like that, too. And uh, so <laughs> I was like, okay. Check. I'd try to stream again. Every once in a while, it would go ahead and take the stream and actually go through as it should. Which was uh, greatly increasing the turnaround time on getting a stream uploaded because, well, it was already there. A lot of trying to work out the controls to get comments enabled on a stream after it had gone live previously was kind of uh, interesting. Yeah, we'll go with interesting. And... Um, I gave up on trying to stream to YouTube in addition to Twitch and Mixer. So going forward, all videos for all three of my gaming-related shows 
are going to go live on Mixer and Twitch. I will keep the past streams for as long as either service will allow them to stay in the previous streams. And I will always upload a copy of the stream to YouTube and archive.org. Uh, with YouTube being the special place that it is, I don't entirely trust them to not issue a weird takedown for whatever reason. And for that purpose, I'm going to keep a backup stream on archive.org. So uh, there will always be a record somewhere of the stream. Getting a little ahead of myself as far as... Uh, yeah, feeling like I'm important enough to warrant that sort of thing. Although I do have confidence that this will take off eventually. It's going to take a little bit. I haven't been pushing it like I should because in part I don't have the YouTube channel descriptions and all the, the fit and finish handled quite the way I want. My Twitch and Mixer profiles aren't quite uh, as I'd like them yet. But uh, that is all being worked on. I think Ray asked one of these two. I can't remember, but it does no harm to grab them. Oh, takes up an inventory spot. Oh, for shame. Uh, man. Catching things about as good as I do in real life. Uh. <laughs> yeah, that sort of athleticism was not my strong point. I played soccer. I ran cross country. Catching was not on the list of skills I desperately, desperately needed. So that's been the bulk of my extra time. And unfortunately, YouTube seems to be ordering things in the order uploaded not in the order aired so despite setting the air date with when the stream originally went live if you look at the youtube content feed it will be showing all the videos in the order i uploaded them <laughs> if there's a way to reorder all that stuff i have not found it yet that is uh that is also on the to-do list but first i want to get all the content up there and uh, once that happens, then that's everything out of here. Let's go this way. Once I get everything up and settled in, I'll start pushing the channels a little bit more. And you probably caught that I said three game streams. And if you look right now, you'll only see videos for two Coffee Craft where I do the Minecraft server with Arcadius and Rayest, and the 47% of my World of Tanks streams on Fridays that I do with a wider assortment of folk. Uh, Rayest no longer plays the game for reasons I've explained over there a couple of times, and I usually play with Fart Rock or, and or Hordes of Locust, uh, two long-term friends that I've known for ages. Arcadius will occasionally join me on that as well, and I got a couple other friends that I might in... Holy mother city, Batman. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Alright, where to begin? In the beginning. Duh. Uh, <laughs> I spent too much time being self-amusing. Heard you. Oh, you're under the lip of the boat, aren't you? That's my own fault. All right. And what do you? Ooh, more instant health. Always nice. I think we are going to set up some brewing stations, so that is why I am keeping all those guys, just in case you're wondering.
Hello. Alright, gold is always nice. Pickaxes are doubly nice. Bam. Okay. So. Time to start spreading out the loot. Uh, green stuff. I'll dump a bunch of that there. I will keep one of those on me. I'll keep the rest in here. Put my sword. My elytra. Those guys. Alright. I'll take this guy. And put my blocks in blocks. I missed a shell somewhere. Because I do have the data pack that sets those guys to drop two shulker shells. So you always get a set. Interesting. Alright, those guys, those guys. That'll go there. And some chorus fruit and flowers. And the shovel. Yeah. I'll have to go looking around. See where that missing shell is. I was pretty sure I had them. Oh. <laughs> I missed that one. That is not mine. That is one that I picked up. Alright, eh, it's good for the bane of arthropods. But I can make some use of that. Breaking inefficiency, always good. Um, I'll probably take some of this stuff and make Ariesta a decent set of tools. Because she doesn't have them. And I'm tired of hearing about it. Alright, and... Take that. Get rid of the beetroot seeds. I've got saddles. Ah. Okay. There we go. Space. And now... Deal with you. fall down there? I wonder if the data pack's not working. That is always a possibility, too. Let me see real quick. Oh, no. Oh, I wonder if that's what happened. I bet that's what happened. One of the one of the guys I killed, one shell dropped off the edge. Okay. Alright, good to know. Good to know. Double check all shell drops in the future. Probably help if I time the stuff right too. There we go. Because I would like one of those. And one of those. I'll take it if I can get it. And that guy right there. Yeah, there we go. Did I get all the light? Start working my way through this guy. <sighs> Sorry, feeling a little stiff today. All 
I work at a shop that repairs and refurbishes instruments. And uh, we get 16 sousaphones. <laughs> so I had to help the gentleman who does that part of the work get 16 sousaphones out of <laughs> the shipping trailer and into... Hi. Uh, and into storage. Ah, fine. And uh, sousaphones are not light. Just so you know. Why do I feel like I didn't pick up his shells? I killed two of the yahoos over there. So that means I should have six? No. No, no, no. Never mind. I got it right. I got it right. Short-term memory, something or other. Eventually I'll remember what it is. <laughs> anyway, the sousaphones are not light. And, uh, yeah. So, I'm a little stiff. The not so gentle reminder that I probably ought to uh, get back into weightlifting again. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, that was not fun. You're gonna keep harassing me down there, aren't you? That's why this is where the big loot is. Ooh, I thought I hit fly on that one in time. Obviously not. Alright, I got my even number of shells. Like I should. I'm not surprised that I'm hearing guys inside. It's the one on the outside that's got me kind of worried. food I had in there too. Alright, I'll have to remember that a little bit later. Ten shells. So far, so good. I know there's a Yahoo on one of these platforms out here somewhere. And I want to get the lights off the edge anyway. Is he shooting me through the hole in the wall? No, because I made that hole. I made that hole too. Making a lot of holes in the wall. 
All right. They just came off of that one, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Down, down, wheel. Down, down to Goblin Town. <laughs> Sorry. A little too self amusing there. Okay. Alright, so I got all the lights from that guy. And I think that's it for this one. Let me do a quick fly by to check. Yeah, there we go. Alright, I'll do this one next. I hear you. Ah. Come on. Oh. <laughs> That's my own fault. <laughs> That's my own fault. Okay. Alright. Oh. Oh. Okay. You didn't go that far. Interesting. Should be two shells bringing me up to another twelve. I'll get my lamps. And then I'll grab the banners. Or not. Not the end of the world if I don't get these guys. Watch the stairs. I'm headed down a little early. Okay. And I came down from there. I know I could just fly by it and grab it that way, but I don't feel that lucky seen about the extent of my luck here today. Alright. I'll do that guy next. But first, let's see what else we got down this way. And we'll see what we got in the way of the program. Hello, Mr. Firebreak. Thank you for the follow. Seems to be a little bit of a delay in when uh, alerts and all that fun stuff come in. I wonder if that's a holdover from Friday's stream. I thought I turned off the uh, stream delay. Because, <laughs> uh... Dodge Weave. Yeah, fight each other. Just doing a little end raiding today. Got a couple of different shows that I work on. There's this one, Coffee Craft. Normally I've got a little extra company on this go around. But, uh, Reyes does that work? And Arcadius is still trying to get uh, settled in after a very, very weird work week. And it's only Tuesday. Think about that one for a minute. There we go. Alright, not too bad. As 
was mentioning that I've got three game streams that I do. This one, the 47% where I play World of Tanks, and there's a new one starting this Thursday. It is going to be Games Revisited, where I take some games that are a little less new. Um, they may be new to me, they may be uh, fondly remembered, and play through them. Try to expose some people to a wider variety of games. Um, <laughs> and this Thursday I will be beginning with Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. It's one of those games that back when it came out, Arcadius recommended it to me highly. I had always intended to play it, but never quite got around to it. And so now I'm actually going to do it. I managed to pick it up on uh, a Star Wars sale that was going on. one guy is under there. Yeah, I actually don't mind if you hit me this time. Alright. Boop. Ah, almost. the angry Enderman sound. Yeah. Must be somewhere else when the angry Enderman sound's going off. Bam! Pick up one more banner, though. Or not. if he got hit by one of the uh, poker things. There you are. Come on. Ah, oh, thought I timed it right. <laughs> and this is why I always take an infinity bow with me. I don't have to carry 13 stacks of arrows. reminds me of that time way back in the day when Ray Est and I were playing the old 007 game with the golden gun on a uh, split screen. I knew she was around one corner, she knew I was around the other corner, and we sat there forever. Each one waiting for the other person to walk around. Neither one of us was going to back off because we both had the golden gun. We knew, both knew the minute you turned your back, that's it. Toast. <laughs> so we sat there forever. Each one patiently waiting for the other to turn around and walk away or come around the corner. <laughs> That's one that if I could figure out how to get a decent emulator, I might give that a go. But I don't think that has the same, uh, I think it's a little more nostalgic than it is anything else. Although I heard that somebody rebuilt it in a, uh, more modern gaming engine. I just forget which one they used. Alright. This is a relatively safe place. Rob 
probably a good idea to go ahead and pack up the loot. And yeah, that's it for that kind of stuff. Oh, interesting. Those only stacked to 16. For some reason, I thought they did more than that. Learn something new. I don't know why I'm organizing that and arranging it. I'm gonna leave one there as a placeholder that I knew stacked weird. So let me do that and do that. off the rockets yeah there we go there we go everything's tucked away nice and safe and I think once I grab these two lights this tower will be cleared Start this guy at the top. That's my own fault. <laughs> All right. All right, I may or may not get that later. Got a little too focused on what I was doing and forgot about the chatting. Um, I was mentioning that this Thursday I will be starting a new series, Games Revisited, beginning with Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, one that came highly recommended by Arcadius. I'd always meant to play it when it first came out. I never quite got around to it. Picked it up on sale on Steam and... Uh, Really looking forward to that one, especially since that's supposed to be the whole Darth Revan series, and there is a possibility that Disney might turn around and make some of that part canon. Um, I hope they do. I hope they try to take some cues from the uh, the few remaining fans from prior to the acquisition and maybe make a little effort to take some of the older beloved material and bring it into into the canon I think that might help uh, heal some wounds of course the graphics are going to be fun it is definitely not a widescreen game so I'm going to have to play around with uh, XSplit to see what I got to do to make that actually work out so if you see me on tomorrow it's probably going to be to test out settings and make sure that everything's working alright I am going to start Thursday's show at 6 o'clock instead of the usual 7 because a lot of the games that I'm looking to play take time. They take a lot of time. And in the interest of making sure that I get through it in a reasonably decent pace, 
I'm going to uh, I'm going to start earlier so that way I play for at least three hours each session, and hopefully that way I will. Uh, I just realized I wanted that different, uh, and hopefully that way I will um, be able to um, talk and fight at the same time. Uh, <laughs> Actually, do do the playthrough in a reasonable amount. Because it is an enjoyable game. I don't want to rush. But I also don't want to linger forever in a day. So that'll probably end up going from uh, 6 Eastern. Nine. I've been half tempted to move this one back from seven to six, just so that way I get a little bit of time to upload to start rendering the video and maybe start uploading it sooner. Uh, get on a regular schedule and all that. Is that the last one in this tower. Yeah. And that's there. So now we go to this guy. Oh. Oh dear. There we go. Okay. One of the nice things about working at the repair shop. I have far more time for podcasts and audiobooks than I ever did before. I've actually been able to get caught up and add a few podcasts that I wasn't listening to before, but always wanted to. And I've been able to take care of some of the audiobooks that have been sitting in my library forever. Um, unfortunately, the one I just finished, I... It was good, entertaining, and after and twice in the book because of the level of uh, scholarship or rhetorical shenanigans. I'm trying to figure out a really nice way to say what I need to say. Um, basically, I can't trust the book because there's a couple of places where the author clearly um, had a different message that they wanted to emphasize. And did so in a way that compromised the integrity of the scholastic material. Yeah, I realize that's a little too vague to be useful. Uh, <laughs> um, the book. I guess I can get away with uh, naming a book title and not losing the family friendly rating on the channel. The book is titled Holy Shit. It is a history of swearing in U.S. and British English. And it starts from Roman time, where apparently far more of our conventions than we realized were formed. And it carries it on through the Victorian era and into modern times, relatively modern times. The book was published in 2013. Uh, it was relatively soon, and or relatively recent. And the first book started out all right, some interesting things, some stuff about the Roman culture I didn't know, uh, some interesting tidbits on the history of swearing. And the book does go to great pains to emphasize the distinction between swearing, cursing, and oaths. Um, because the, those were 
swearing and cursing and cussing were three different things and for much of our culture have been treated as different things and so to under to properly understand the history you have to go through each of the different ones so a lot of our swearing and some of our cursing follows a much more roman style than i think most people realize and so after that chapter they go into go 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 from swearing in the roman fashion to or sorry from cursing in the roman fashion to swearing and since swearing was originally more a function of uh oaths and we borrow a lot of our oath making from the Christian tradition, which itself borrows from the Jewish tradition. The second chapter focuses on oaths in Jewish history and uses various examples from the Old Testament about the swearing of oaths and the formulas used and the power and intent. And if the author had stayed within the reputed focus of that for that chapter everything would have been fine but the author takes great pains to also add um, that certain verb tenses can be interpreted as plural and then she goes, and if you are a monotheist, then there is a perfectly valid explanation for this. But if you're not a dedicated monotheist, and then proceeds to go the rest of the chapter um, <laughs> in strict, uh, the Jews were actually polytheists who got rid of all the gods but one. And just continue down that vein, despite the fact that, as she admits, the, there is a perfectly valid and internally consistent justification for everything that she's talking about. Um, <laughs> and nothing she said disproves the internally consistent example. And nothing... Yeah, so... It, it's a complete logical exercise in what exactly? <laughs> oh, trying to discredit monotheism without actually saying, oh, by the way, I am also going to discredit monotheism. Uh, and just the the shady rhetorical sleight of hand that has to happen to make that, to, that makes that happen in the chapter really gives me pause because if you're willing to short on the scholarship for that, where else are you willing to short on the scholarship? Where else are you willing to kind of cut corners or do a little verbal sleight of hand? And so, yeah, I, you know, once you do that there, I can't trust the rest of it. So I listened to the rest of the book because, you know, it was still entertaining and I wanted to finish the book. So I could at least say that I gave the whole book a shot. And we get to the the last chapter on the more modern. And, of course, you know, she touts out the fight and words doctrine. And it's a overly simplistic, uh, selective section of court cases. But that that's not as problematic in the context of what she's trying to say and prove. Until she then goes into the whole, you know, can't shout fire in a crowded theater trope, which is not current case law. It was not what was meant by that particular case law and has long since been discredited thoroughly. If you're interested in a wonderful write-up on that, uh, go to popat.com, and uh, Ken White has a fantastic post on the ridiculousness of the fire in a crowded theater trope and everything involved in that. And, uh, yeah, so so now that, that makes two sections that seem... wrong 
for one reason or another. Where'd you go? So, you know, once once I got to start questioning your scholarship at that level, I really can't... I would be reluctant to quote that book now if I were trying to talk to somebody about what I learned, because... I don't know. Is it right? I can't tell. And that just... That, that really bothers me. There, there was one other time that I ran into a book like that where the the scholarship was so obviously poorly thought out like there were good reasonable logical ways to say what they wanted to say but they didn't choose those and so if you're that slipshod on your logic there if you're that slipshod on your research there how how am I supposed to trust the rest of what you've written? Um, it, I'm trying to remember the name of the book. I want to say it was What They Believe or something along those lines. It was supposed to be a comparative religion book uh, comparing and contrasting different faiths. And what they had written about the Catholic Church, I knew to be blatantly wrong. I was raised Catholic. I know what the catechisms teach. And what he was saying they taught was not it. And it was the kind of easily disproved stuff that certain groups and certain people like to repeat because it makes their point feel a little more firm <laughs> than it is. And, uh, and so it's like, okay, if you are unwilling to be consistent with that, what else are you unwilling to be consistent about? And especially since, uh, one, one of the big arguments in his book is that you cannot justify the office of the Pope because the word Pope is never found anywhere in the Bible. There are a lot of legitimate ways to uh, discredit the office of the Pope. Not discredit, but uh, say that that's not, that's not an office that was intended to be an office. At least as the Catholic Church practices it. He didn't use any of those arguments. Instead it was, the word doesn't exist in the text, and therefore that's why there's no Pope. Okay, that, that's the worst kind of circular reasoning I've ever seen, but all right. And then <laughs> the same author turns around and in a later chapter where he's discussing a group that denies the Trinity, says they will tell you there's no Trinity because you can't find the word anywhere in the Bible. But it is a conceptual It is a conceptual model, and it's there even though the word is not used. Like, okay, okay, wait a second, wait a second. Let me see if I'm getting this right. I shouldn't believe that there's a pope because the word doesn't exist. And if the word doesn't exist, it's not a thing. But I should believe the Trinity even though the word doesn't exist because it's a conceptual thing. Um, again, there are all sorts of reasonable, logical, and consistent ways to make the arguments that he's trying to make. Uh, both in the case of for the Trinity and against the Pope. Or the office of the Pope, I should say. And again, <laughs> he didn't employ any of them. And it's like, if I can't... If I can't trust you on this, if I can't trust you to be logically consistent on these things, what else can I not trust you at? Like, what else are you where are where else are you gonna cut corners? Ooh, wrong weapon. So yeah. A couple of books that, you know, I, I've read. They were well-written and all sorts of wrong. 
they're well written in the sense that, that the English and the layout and the you know but they were not well written in terms of the way they framed their arguments or the logical consistency and it, it's just one of those things that I find very disappointed because there have been many authors that have disagreed with their ultimate conclusion but I've never had cause to doubt how they got there no that's not quite right either um I've never doubted that you could get from A to B using the premise that they've set up. Uh, it is all at least well-reasoned, and the question is one of facts, whether fact set A or fact set B is true. That is that is where the crux of the matter comes. I don't know if that helped either. Um, anyway. So... I get to find a new audiobook. I will probably go hunting around to see if uh, Butcher's finally got around to working on Dresden, because it's time for a nonfiction book. And maybe I'll start investing in the uh, Dresden Files audiobooks. I've read the books themselves, the Kindle versions at least. And I generally do enjoy the series. Sorry. Again, having trouble fighting and uh, talking at the same time. <laughs> Multitasking. Not my strongest skill. Some would say it's not even on the skill list. or did they fall down? See them down there? Have you fed Jabba? Okay. Arcadius is on the other side of the computer. Literally, not metaphorically. Uh, <laughs> Let's see how many how many shells we can walk away with. I know I lost that one. Yeah, it's always a little odd. I'm definitely going to have to spend some time over at the Guardian Farm repairing a few things. Alright, that's holding up pretty well. Actually, that's probably been sopping up some of the XP from uh, killing all these shulkers, which is always nice. That was an ominous sound. Well, you know what? While well, we've got a bit of a pause, let's go ahead and put a bunch of stuff away in the ender chest. Uh, Alright, nothing that's going on there. That's not a bad haul, all told. So far, at least. Got a stack and a bit of shulker shells. Bunch of banners for Rayest. 
couple of brewing stands so we can try to set up uh, set something up. I've actually been thinking about as part of my uh, base build going in and setting up dedicated potion brewing stations because I don't I don't make a huge variety of potions. I make instant health, fire resistance. Maybe one or two others. So just setting up the potions with all the ingredients in um, rows of boxes. So all I got to do is pop a button and it sets everything up. So I can get all my potions in one shot. And just get uh, single purpose brewing stands. I don't know where in my base I'm going to set that up. But that's a problem for a different day. So far, so good. Where's the next tower? Set. Ooh. Huh. Oh. <laughs> oh, now I know I'm getting tired. Maybe it's time to dip into that scotch. Nah, not tonight. find where that one guy ran off to, unless that's him there. Well, there's usually at least this guy by the door. I hear the other guy. Alright, start working my way back up. Collecting the lighting. That's not a fish. That's a fish. All right. Time to pillage. We'll start at the top. Oof. Oh, there you are. Hello. Days I'm gonna come in here with an army of shulker boxes and just tear a whole stinking city down. I think it was on the last server. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was on the last server. Arcadius actually took down a whole end ship and rebuilt it. Is that this one? Alright, I guess I gotta go find it again. Because he's over there signaling that it was this server that he tore down a whole ship and rebuilt it. And apparently a whole city. 
<laughs> Behold Arcadius, destroyer of cities. Weep as his pickaxe wears. Yeah, this has been a fairly fruitful session. Question is... Wanted yeah, no. I need more. I can always use more shulker shells. I have not met the person who said, Yeah, I got enough. for rests demonic temple of doom I got a couple ideas for my castle that I, I'd like to play around with a little bit I want to put some uh, some more decorations on the side build it out a little bit I absolutely hate the snow which is why I've got a million and two lanterns there and I'm actually thinking instead of just spamming lanterns to keep the snow and or trying to do the carpet um, or any of a lot of the other things that I've tried I'm actually just gonna build it so the wall is the outer wall of the castle itself and just make a massively massive castle you know so the outer walkway is the porch on the outside where did I come in I don't remember all right Let's go exploring. Um, and then just start building up from there. So that where the current walkway is will now be the second floor. And then continue building up from there. Hello, city. I'll eat that later when I land. Not that hungry. Let me rephrase that. My character's not that hungry. I'm still hungry. I had dinner. I'm still kind of hungry. I'm having a little bit of trouble with a sweet tooth here lately. turned around. Had to have. Yeah. I've been here before. You look familiar. I think this is the one I found when I first, uh, no. I cleared that out before, so this must have been one of the one of the few that Arcadius and I found the last time we went and did this. No, maybe this is one I found earlier today. Not that it matters. There's no loot to be had. Alright. Now it's not much, but let me go ahead and store the blocks I have. Because the last thing I want to do is have rockets run out in the middle of all this. <laughs> Check on my elytra durability, okay. Because the last thing I want is for that to run out in the middle of all this. The way my luck usually goes, I will be smack dab over the void. And that is when everything will run out. A few more rockets. I think I might grab my flight box next time I stop and get some uh, duration three.
Because now that chunk loading has uh, vastly improved, courtesy of an actual honest to goodness server. You know what I forgot? I forgot to mark out where the uh, portal to get home is. Huh. Well, I hope the next city I find has one. Because <laughs> I, I know that is a thing. I've run across them before. Of course, if I run across a random ender chest just sitting on the stone, I'll know that I've doubled back to where I went the first time I went to testing, or to one of the places that Arcadius and I went the last time we went to end busting. Because it got so bad, we didn't even bother to find our way back. We just stuffed everything in an ender chest and jumped. And honestly, if I don't find a portal somewhere, that may be, uh, that may be the way I go back. It's not the way I'd choose. Oh, we're doing so good. Found a couple of cities. Obviously, we found some new... At least we got some new spaces. Definitely grabbing longer flight. Oh, speaking of portals. All right, here's the question. There's usually a city around here somewhere around these things. Not today, there isn't. All right. So, back to the rhetorical question. Do I bail now with what I've got and my lives intact? Do I keep exploring? It is quarter after. But on the other hand, I've been babbling incoherently, which is not usually a good sign. Yeah, let me take my leech. Let me do the smart thing. No. Oh, and... I think it was in here. Is there my... Yeah, there's my ender ender. I take a uh, fire aspect off of... Uh, the sword when I go after these guys. I do want to replenish, uh, replenish my ender pearls. Alright. Come on, guys. Get mad. Aye. That's going to get kind of loud, so bring that down. So far, so good. Heal up a few things while I'm at it. Actually, that is one of the things that I do need to put on the agenda, too, is getting an ender farm going. Because it'd be nice to have an easier way to get these pearls. I'd like to do the one that uh, Iskal built on the Hermitcraft server. 
I know he's published the plans for that. I just need to make sure that it does not cross chunk boundaries, because apparently in 1.14 that really messes with the spawning mechanics and can seriously reduce the efficiency of farms, which are already themselves reduced. Because of course they are. Stacks, I'll call my work done. Get the uh, ender ender back in the box. Actually, click on what I had intended to. No, I'll mess with the rest of that stuff later. Let me get to where I'm safe. <laughs> Smart things. I sometimes try them. Alright, so. Arcadius and I did that first one the last time. I just did that second one. Although I didn't try all the directions. But I did get to at least one of the places we already looted. I guess we'll do that third one as we go counterclockwise around the island. And we'll hit that guy next. Probably farm up some more obsidian, but uh, that's not something you want to do on stream. <laughs> Alright. And... Oh, loot and loot. Those guys in there. Where's my combat? Oh, the box I just grabbed. I really do need to name that thing too. I'll add that to the list of things I ought to do. Alright, I want my distance burn. Put infinity back in there. I like my backup armor. In my backup, a backup. I need to get one more backup set of boots. No, two more sets of back. Two more backup sets of boots, and one more backup helmet, and then I might feel okay. Maybe. <laughs> the astute among you have probably noticed that I tend to have backups and backups of backups and backups of those backups when I do the backups. Because that's pretty much how I roll. That's why I got the video on Mixer and Twitch and YouTube and archive.org. So, you know, it's wherever, just in case. My potion storage. Yeah. I get some splash potions of instant damage too. Slow falling, but I really do need to get some more uh, phantom membranes. Fire resistance and instant health, and really those are the two that I use the most. So uh, with the brewing stands that I picked up this go around, I'll start work on that project. So I can start just mass producing them, and every time I need another trio, I'll just run over to the uh, brewing stand, hit the button, and call it good. I've got two other stands, and I'll probably keep one available for general purpose, just in case. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to get it, but I do still plan on... 
getting together um, a tour of previous servers. So that way you can see some of the stuff we worked on before. And when you look at the server that we did the last go around, Arcadius has a really neat brewing stand set up where you hit the ingredients and then you push a button and yeah, it's really good. Really fun. So I might set up one of those just to have a general purpose one available too. That's probably the setup for, you know what, I'm going to go put back and put that in my combat armor box. That is definitely the solid foundation for uh, a new set of boots. And I might start working on those guys for rest. So she can actually have a full set of really good tools. I don't have an electro box in here. I'll put them in here for now. How's that doing? All right, not too bad. I haven't been in this area. I also got to figure out why those guys are not quiet. I use the uh, mob silencer, and they are supposed to be silent. But as you can tell, they are the most non-silent silent mobs I've ever seen. Throw those guys over the top. Next time I am in the end. No, next time I am at the end portal. I will go grab that one lone shell that's just kind of sitting out there for no apparent reason. spot for the purple glass. No idea. I'm going to put it with the glass. Hey, look at that. I got a whole six diamonds. <laughs> Although, to be fair, I haven't... I haven't needed regular diamonds so much this go-around. Because uh, other than the initial pick, the uh, all my diamond gear, I've bought from villagers like a lot of the armor that I'm using right now I, I've traded with villagers for a fair number of the tools I've traded with villagers for I'll have to work on that don't let me forget And I know there's a video floating around where somebody does ask the question. If you really do need to, uh, if you can do Minecraft without mining. Yeah, I just use uh, villager trading for everything. Or everything of any great importance. I'm not sure that I go quite that far to, to declare an absence of a need for mining. But I'm not sure. I mean, may, yeah. I mean, you still need stone and stuff like that, so you'd have to mine for that. But uh, on the other hand, with the new mason that's coming through, you won't really even need. Uh, you won't even really need that, because you'll be able to trade for those too. Somebody had set up three little boxes on anvils over here, and each box was named for each of us. I changed it up into this off stream. Um, so that way it actually had a little status late to let you know that there was something in there. Um, that is an ugly building. Uh, that'll have to change. But uh, it's actually really simple and straightforward. Here. Let me knock this open real quick. Bam. 
There we go. That's all the complicated redstone right there. We got a comparator coming off of the box, going into a solid block. That way, no matter how much or how little is in the box, just one item is enough because any item you put in there is going to put off a signal strength of one, which will power that block there, which will power that redstone there, which will power that block there, which will turn on the light. None of this is signal strength dependent. So if we look, we'll see that that is power one over there on the right hand side. You, you can see me pointing at it. <laughs> so the target block. So yeah. So we've got this powering this, giving this a power of one, giving this a power of one, lighting up the light. That's it. That's all there is to it. Well, that and putting all the blocks back right. I thought Arcadius had set up these boxes because he's usually the one naming boxes. So I put the anvils that these are sitting on in his box. If uh, he's not the one who made them, if he could kindly... Actually, I'm not that worried about the iron. I don't think anybody else is either. This guy's been doing pretty good. Um, as you guys know, this particular iron farm design will no longer work in 1.14 whenever we uh, move to that. Uh, Avomance has a tutorial on how to convert one of these style iron farms to work with the new villager mechanics. I'm going to give that a shot. Doc M has a really neat video on a massively producing iron farm that doesn't require a ton of villagers. And there was another gentleman whose name escapes me at the moment, whose model I was originally going to use. But he solves the problem of iron production by throwing more villagers at the problem. So his iron farm achieves results far better <laughs> than what we got going right there by throwing 200 villagers at the problem. <laughs> that seemed kind of ridiculous, but they went in Rome, so I was going to try to turn the villager breeder part of this on, get about 50 fools, stuff them in a corner somewhere, and uh, that way they'd be ready in time for the upgrade. But uh, I'm going to watch Avomance's video, see what it takes to upgrade this and how much work is going to be needed to retrofit this iron farm design. And if it works out well, I may just go ahead and use that. If not, or maybe just because it's a different design, I might just use Doc M's and convert this building into a pure trading hall. Either way, the villager breeder is not going to work as it is built. Cortez Arino did this design, and it's a combination iron farm, trading hall, and villager breeder. That guy right there keeps feeding these guys, and as you trade with them, they drop the baby villagers down there. Don't mind the lava. That's how we uh, turn this off. Uh, <laughs> they still... Reyest was not amused when she found out how the uh, on-off mechanic of this particular farm worked. So, that is definitely going to get stripped down to either an iron farm trading hall or just a trading hall. I'll uh, find the spawn chunk and maybe set up Doc M's iron farm down at bedrock level and just pump the iron up to the surface into a little hut. Um, and then set up a villager breeder somewhere else. You do need to move the villagers at least 160 blocks from the villager breeder. The so one thought was out hollowing out a little bit of this, 160 blocks away from the trading hall, and uh, that way the villager breeder could go and send them over that way. Some people have been doing designs where you set the villager breeder way up in the sky and then just kind of drop the villagers down as they go. I kind of like that idea, but I want to make sure it's something that I can easily turn on and off. Um, 
Because realistically, once we had this set most of the way, we... We haven't really been using the villager breeder portion of this, not for a while. I mean, we got a fair number of villagers pretty close to what we want. We haven't unlocked all the trades, so... Yeah, who knows? We might off a few of these guys later. Um, but either way, I'd like to fit more villagers for trading in here. And since the breeder portion won't be needed, we can probably convert these potato fields into farms, get a couple of the farmer guys in there, set up something like what I got at my base so we'll have potatoes for trading and carrots for trading, and set up one of these for wheat. But these are all rough ideas. A lot of it's, uh, a lot of it I'm not going to worry about until we actually do the update, which will be when, uh, all right, eat the fish. Not that hungry. That'll be, uh, when 1.14.1 comes out and assuming that it actually, uh, fixes a lot of the problems. Um. I'm actually going to call it a night a little bit early. A little bit more tired than I was expecting. And, uh, have a good night. Enjoy. Don't forget, starting this Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, that is minus 4 UTC, I will be starting Games Revisited, beginning with Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, that wonderful Star Wars game, not the MMO that started off nicely and clearly lost its A-team somewhere along the way. Um, <laughs> there's a story there. We'll have to do that one another day, too. And then on Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern, I play World of Tanks as a part of the 47%, making the top half possible. So Coffee Craft Tuesdays at 7, Games Revisited Thursdays at 6, and World of Tanks on Fridays at 7. Good night. Enjoy.